In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. You, O Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer from old is your name. O Lord, why do you make us err from your ways and harden our heart so that we do not fear you? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. O that you would tear the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence. You came down the mountains, quaked at your presence. From of old no one has heard or perceived by the ear, no eye has seen a God besides you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet him that joyfully works righteousness, those that remember you in your ways. Behold, you are angry, and we sinned. In our sins we have been a long time, and shall we be saved? We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one that calls upon your name, that bestirs himself to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us, and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquities. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. The word of the Lord. God of hosts, bring us back. Let your face shine on us, and we shall be saved. God of us, bring us back. Let your face shine on us, and we shall be saved. O shepherd of Israel, hear us. Shine forth from your cherubim throne. O Lord, rouse up your might. O Lord, come to our help. God of hosts, bring us back. Let your face shine on us, and we shall be saved. 
God of hosts, turn again, we implore. Look down from heaven and see. Visit this vine and protect it, the vine your right hand has planted. God of hosts, swing us back. Let your face shine on us, and we shall be saved. May your hand be on the man you have chosen, the man you have given your strength, and we shall never forsake you again. Give us life that we may call upon your name. God of hosts, bring us back. Let your face shine on us, and we shall be saved. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brethren, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to God always for you because of the grace of God which was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him with all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you await for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Take heed, watch, and pray, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Watch therefore, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight, 
or as a cock crow or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, watch. The Gospel of the Lord. Imagine you have gone on a journey to a land where once a week the inhabitants stand around for a period of time, sometimes several hours, and for no particular reason they stop standing around and resume their daily affairs. And you ask them, well, what's all this standing around about? And they say, well, on Fridays everybody waits. And you say, well, what are you waiting for? And they look blankly at you. Of course, it would be very difficult to make sense of that behavior. Waiting has particular kinds of behaviors that we make sense of as waiting. Just standing around doing nothing is not in itself waiting. And when we wait, there is a reason. There is a reason why we wait. We're not just waiting, as it were, because we need a rest. Could be a reason, but generally, reasons for waiting are different. Sometimes we find waiting frustrating. Sometimes it's rewarding. When Jesus, in this parable, talks about the doorkeeper who waits for the master. We don't know a huge amount about what goes on in this doorkeeper's head. We don't know the motivation of the doorkeeper. We're not told anything about the background. More importantly, we're not immediately told anything about the relationship between the servant and the master. So in order to fill in that gap, we have to again look at waiting. Why do we wait? What are the reasons? Now, sometimes when we wait, our waiting has nothing to do with what we're waiting for. The motivation is external. The reason could be external to the waiting. Let's say this servant had been promised a reward when the master returns, or threatened with a punishment. Their concern is waiting for the reward or the punishment. That's why they wait. If they could get the reward and the punishment without the waiting, they would either avoid the punishment or get the reward. Alternatively, the servant could be motivated because or the thing or the person for which they're waiting. See, children wait in anticipation of Christmas. Parents wait for the birth of a child. Not because of any external reward, but in anticipation of the thing itself. In this case, the waiting is not just something to get through, something you would dispose of necessarily. But it's a time where you can prepare yourself. It's an opportunity for preparation for the thing you wait for. So when Christmas comes, the child enters into a greater joy than they would without the waiting, because they prepared themselves for the joys of Christmas. And those parents waiting for their child their joy is greater because of the preparation, the anticipation of the birth of the child. So if this servant sees the waiting as merely something to get through, something which they have to endure, then they will gain little from the experience. Of course, endurance is a very important part of waiting. 
But if waiting just becomes endurance, then it becomes empty, fruitless. Endurance has to be for a reason. So what reason may the servant have for waiting beyond a reward or a punishment? Important as those are. Well, if the master is wise and the servant knows the master is wise, the servant will think there is a good reason. There is a reason why I'm waiting at this gate. There's a reason why I'm waiting for the master. My master is wise. They wouldn't have me waiting here for no reason in vain. And so a lot turns upon how they view the master on their relationship with the master as to how they view this waiting. If the master remains a distant figure, issuing orders from afar, then the waiting and any requirements during the waiting will be seen as externally imposed, very hard to make sense of. Of course, you could still trust in that master if you have good reason to believe the master is wise and good. But your relationship will remain somewhat external. If the master, however, has communicated, has a relationship beyond the merely external one with the servant, if the master has welcomed the servant into their plans, then the servant will begin to see the waiting in a different light. The waiting will not be just something you have to get through, something perhaps imposed by somebody good and wise, but you don't really understand why you should wait. In this case, you are included in the plans of the master. And in this case, the waiting becomes much more fruitful not only have you got a good reason, but actually those reasons become internalized, become part of your own identity. Your identity as a doorkeeper, as a person who waits, is not just something you put on and leave. When you leave the door, it becomes part of who you are, internalized. In this time of Advent, we wait for the coming of Christ, for the birth of that child. And our waiting is not vain because we have a wise and good master, a wise God who rules the world in his providence. But more than that, God has included us, has included us in his plans for our own salvation and for the salvation and redemption of the whole world. This child is one of us, fully human, that most deep, intimate, interior level. God has joined us to himself, including us in his providence, in his wise governance, through his son, Jesus Christ. And so this is not just a time of waiting to endure, something given for external reason, but it's an inner transformation of ourselves. As we are caught up in the love of God. Sometimes people will be told by a boss, well, of course you're very important to the company. We really value you. And if that person is included in a sense of where the company's going has more than just a passive say. Of course, they will feel their worth to the company is much greater. But people may say, well, you know, I've heard management speech time and time again. I've heard people talking about how it's important for me to be included, but I've got no evidence of this. I think this is just people spinning something to get me to work harder. 
But if your boss is willing to stake something, stake something for you, then that becomes a proof that the boss is not just manipulating you. And what could God give that is greater than himself and the person of Jesus Christ, his only son? There is nothing greater God could give to us. God has given his own self. And so we are caught up in the life of God and the providence of God in this most intimate way. And the God who has not held back from giving himself to us so that we can give ourselves in return. So let our waiting not be in vain. God has sent his son into this world. He could give no greater gift. So let us be confident in his promises. Let our hearts be stirred by the promise of his love. Let our lives be transformed by the help he sends each day through the gift and the virtue of hope. And let us wait patiently and fruitfully for his return. Let us stand and proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, Holy Almighty. In true humility of heart, let us bring all our needs before our heavenly and loving Father. That the Holy Catholic Church may be united in fidelity to the Pope and bishops, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. That politicians may act with integrity and keep God's ways in mind, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. That people distracted by worldly pleasures may return to the saving grace of the Spirit, Lord, in your mercy, that each one of us gather here may seek pardon and peace in the sacrament of penance, Lord, in your mercy, that mercy and love may perfect those who have died, Lord, in your mercy. Let us now join our prayers to those of Our Lady as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Bless God. Heavenly Father, in your great mercy, hear these and all our prayers we make through Jesus Christ, our Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us. And may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Your heart Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, 
And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, we blessed Joseph, her spouse, we are blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Bernard our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, for ever and ever. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Amen. evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. <laughs> May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed in whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. <laughs>